Welcome back to the Career Build Series. This is episode number 114, and so we're here at Komodo. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to see if we can get some more containers for Triton here, and then we'll continue on our way. All right, so let's go ahead and we will see what we have up there. We need to buy this base, and I'm going to risk breaking the ankle here. Oh, we didn't, yay. All right, so we're going to buy this base. It's only 80 grand. We have not a ton of money. We have 111,000, but... Uh, I like having a little bit of monetary pressure, having some money pressure kind of, it motivates me to go do some things, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you had a bank account full of money, you know, it, it, it uh, lowers the value of that time, you know, and it uh, makes, doesn't give you a really good incentive to go do some of these things. So when you're a little bit tight on money, you know, it gives you that uh, incentive. And so this is kind of like a classic game. Uh, money sink. You need these money sinks to be able to kind of motivate you to go do some more stuff. And so this is part of that. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to Sawyer North. So ideally we want to grab some North containers. That's an expired one. All right. Yeah, so we'll try to find some Sawyer North. I don't want to really load up too much for anywhere else. I think we might be going to FJ, but I don't want to carry them around. I don't want to limit what I, what I uh, can do. You know, that really makes it so that I have to... Uh, Definitely have to go do that. This way, I don't have to go do anything. So, all right, we're down to our last couple here. So we'll see. Package expired. All these appear to be expired. So, all right. So it looks like there are no containers here. Up oh, there's a dogum though. We're gonna go steal that dogum. Let's go steal this dog. We just got another mission here to repair a boat. So we'll get out of here. Fortunately, we didn't have any containers for Sawyer North, but that's all right. But we now can steal this dog. I think. There we go. So we have a dog now. So that is nice to have. So let's go ahead and we'll put this dog in Triton. Just need to remember to take the dog out by uh, before I despawn Triton. So let's go ahead and we will unhook Triton and we'll get underway. So it would have been nice to have some containers here, but, you know, there's always the possibility that we just wouldn't have any. And so that's what happened. And so it's still worth the stop. You know, we really don't burn any fuel. This was on our way. Head to Sawyer North. We'll dump these two. And we'll see what that has. You know, I don't want to commit too much time to having to do this. The benefit with Triton is since I can put it on autopilot and it can go run and essentially, you know, move these containers while I'm going doing other things. It really doesn't um, really doesn't restrict me from doing other things. So let's go ahead and take our new doge here and put them in the uh, kind of the hangout area here. There you go. And let's go ahead and we'll start pulling lines and we'll get out of here. And then we'll look into that new mission that just popped up. We might take Katie out and uh, do that. So if you're watching the live stream, I've been building a new VTOL. And that VTOL is designed to fit on the pad of Triton. I also just started the Build Challenge Golf, which is to build a VTOL that can operate off of Triton's pad. And so that way uh, you can... Uh, you know, you can build it so that it will fit on Triton, and I will be using it, and the winners will uh, have their vehicles used in uh, an episode of the Career Build Series. So often there are three or more winners. You know, I uh, I allow for multiple winners in certain categories. Generally, uh, you know, Captain's favorite is one winner, and then uh, points winners, if I get a tie, if it's not, if something else is my favorite, I'll break the tie and make it my favorite. If uh, something else is my favorite, I will let there be two points winners, and then the community winner can be whatever the community wants, so there can be multiples of that. But I will take the winners, and they'll be used on Triton in an episode. So let's go ahead, and we'll start uh, thrusting off of the dock. Engines are off. We'll start them up. So you saw the smoke. That is just the harbor generators. All right, engines are up and running. We'll go ahead and we will take off the uh, stern thruster, and I'm just going to, oh, let's desync the thrust here. I just want to come up on port because I want the bow to turn out. So I have the bow thruster going, and I'm also pushing asymmetrically with the uh, port screw. And as you can see, you can see the motion of the ship. The ship is favoring. It's going to the right. It's moving diagonally. It's moving both forward and to the right. It's also twisting because I have that one prop going. As you can see, that is clearing me of the rock. So that's why I'm doing that. So we're going to go ahead now that we're clear of the rock. We're going to start to thrust up. 
And I'll start thrusting up starboard. And we'll go ahead and we will shut off the bow thruster. All right, now that they're uh, pretty much synced, we I'll click the sync button. Now they're matched. And we'll go ahead and we'll thrust up here. Uh, we're going to go under the bridge here right away here. And um, so I'm going to put the mast down. Mast is on its way down. We need to now select our navigation lights. And we'll go ahead and we'll make a turn underneath the bridge. So a lot of work on Triton to be done. So it's uh, always a lot of work to be done on this ship. It's just kind of be to be expected. So I still have the race course out there. So uh, Sausalago race course. That's why that island looks extra big. At some point, I'll get rid of that. I, I had it for Big Man's Challenge. I just don't want it taking up too much in the way of resources. So I need to go in the uh, game files and edit that to get rid of it. So, But it's a cool track. So mass should be down. We hope it's down. It's indicating down. As you see, it has a green light there. So I can see it from here that it's green. So that should tell us to go under. And if we look, as you can see, going right under, no problem here. All right, so we're clear. we we'll go ahead and put the mass back up. There we go. And so... The the map's going to show differently than what's out there because this is the island that Sausalago's on, so I have to be careful. I need to uh, either hug the coast or not. This Okay, so this is the boat that needs servicing here. A uh, small boat in the ocean to... Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that one. It's, uh, it's not bad money, but it's... Uh, you know, I'm not going to take Triton out there to do that. It would be cool at some point to put one of those ships that uh, actually sink a little bit. And they then uh, you put a boat on top, and uh, it re reballasts, and uh, you're able to float with the ship on top. That would be kind of cool to build one of those. So we're going to go to the north of that island. So let's go ahead and we'll add a waypoint. Did I add it? I think I did. Yep, I added the waypoint. And then we're looking for Sawyer North, which is right here. So I'm trying to clear all the islands. So we're just going to add a point here. All right. And let's go return. We'll zoom out. We'll check our path. Important to check your path to make sure that you're not going to hit anything. And that looks pretty good there. So let's go ahead and recenter and we'll zoom out. All right, autopilot's going to become active. And we'll let Triton steer towards. So as you can see, we're going north of Sausalago. And then there are some. Uh, that is the beginner base, and that is the hospital island. So not too far from where we need to be. All right, so I will go ahead and time lapse you guys out and I'll see when to get there.
welcome back here. So we're arriving at Sora North. So we'll go ahead and we will dock here momentarily. So a little bit of AI traffic there. It's nice to see some AI helicopters and whatnot coming in. So go ahead and we're gonna get ready to dock. So we'll go into uh, first person perspective here. All right, so we're gonna start um, Coming over to the starboard side here, and we'll get ready to move in for this dock. I will desync the thrust. And we'll start coming up on starboard, and we'll start going down on port. Put a little bit of rudder in there. Start kicking the stern over. And we'll start coming down on port. All right, we'll start coming down on starboard. I wanna make sure we don't hit the stern on the uh, bankment there, but we should be all right. All right, we'll start coming down on starboard. So I have my rudder turned to the left there. So we come in a little bit diagonally. So I'm, as you can see, we're coming in diagonally as we come in. And so that's what I want there at the moment. And so we're going to start pushing the bow in so that we get a little bit more diagonal force toward the dock because... I'm going to get ready to push the rudder starboard here, or port rather. Start pushing the rudder port. Start coming off this side here. Off port, and we'll leave starboard up. There we go. And you can see how it's pushing us in diagonally. And we'll zero out. Put rudder midships. And we'll dock. So I'm gonna go ahead and as is customary to make sure vehicle damage is off for the docking. Again, we don't want to be pressed up. So as you can see, nice docking job there. We're just gonna slide right in. So Bingo, okay, contact. All right, so with damage off, we can leave that running. Again, that's just to simulate what it would be like IRL. You know, you're really not going to get, uh, you know, you're really not going to get damage on these docks when you're uh, docking properly. So just simulates what would happen if we uh, were actually in a, in a real world where we had some fenders that worked. So. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll tie off here. So that's just the uh, bow and stern thrusters continuing to go just to keep us pinned up against the dock while I am getting us ready to be attached. I'll try to get around Katie here. There we go. All righty. So hopefully these aren't expired. I haven't really checked the time. It's not the end of the world if they're expired. It's not a ton of cash, but part of this I do for the funsies anyway, so we'll see if uh, I haven't checked them recently. The containers so all right so we should be good here let's check them yep we still have 30 minutes so we're good so pretty close but not too bad so let's go up back up to the bridge and i will go ahead and i will uh, zero out those thrusters so part of the way i rp this where for example i jump off the boat do kind of silly cartoony stuff like that is you know, again, you're going to have many people operating a ship this size. So you'd have people in the dock servicing and helping you. You would have more people on board. And, of course, we don't have that. So that leaves me to uh, do a lot of this myself. And so part of me doing this myself is I kind of do some unrealistic things like jumping off the boat and everything. And it's kind of like me changing character. All right. So let's go ahead and let's unload these containers.
So the smoke going on out of the stacks, that's just the harbor generators going and the remainder of the uh, of the engine spooling down. So go ahead and we will crane this sucker out of here. So I ended up with the two containers. Well, you know, not a ton of containers, but uh, a little bit of cash. You know, I think one's worth seven grand. So that's uh, all I really care about is profitability. You know, if you remember, we have done missions with Katie did as we're out there doing some rescues. I started working a live stream on a new VTOL that will uh, it will uh, work kind of the, do the same job as Katie did essentially be able to land on the pad. You know, I like to have a variety of vehicles to do it, you know feel like running a helicopter, feel like running a VTOL, can run different stuff, so it's kind of fun to have a variety. And that's one of the cool things about having a game like this, is you can just build whatever you want and use it. You know, IRL, you'd have to kind of stick with what's most uh, profitable in game. Of course, we don't have to worry about that. So, let's see. Is that expanding? Let's see. Okay, there we go. We're extending now. And then I'm going to press 8. There we go. And I need to extend some more there. There we go. As you can see, the carriage is extending. And once that grabs, we will be good to go. So there's a little bit of flexibility. Like I talked about how the linear tracks, they're flexible. They're rubbery. This is rubbery. And so you watch when it snaps, it will just pull that linear track to the end, and it doesn't cause a huge issue. So... Uh, the rope is causing an issue, though. I have that I have that rope on there for moving it, so I need to pull that off. That rope is uh, at max stretch, so it won't let me extend that anymore because the uh, rope is grabbing it. So we'll just go get that rope off of there. And while I'm here, I'll detach the bottom. So, you know, for example, like here, you know, IRL, you would be able to vault yourself and climb on there. Can't do it in game, so I'm just going to no clip. It's one of the reasons why I leave stuff like that on is it's like IRL, you'd be able to kind of shimmy yourself up there, and so can't do that in game. Can't we don't have any vaulting mechanics, so uh, let's go ahead and detach the bottom. There we go. All right. So we have a helicopter coming in here to land. So I do like having the uh, AI. It gives me a little bit of. Uh, not coming in, it is coming in, okay. Gives me a little bit of life here. What is going on here? Um, trying to see which direction this should be going here. This might need some work. This does not want to extend properly. There we go. Okay, it's extending now. It's moving the whole container. So let's do this. Uh, let's unhook this, and we will go out, and I will hook the other side first. So we'll hook the far side of the carriage. Let's extend it here. All right. It, did, it wasn't like an extending it while it was connected, so we just I just disconnected it so that it will more readily extend. There we go. Now it's going to extend better for me. There we go. All right, now we can reattach. And we'll come in a little bit, in and up. There we go. All right, so this one on the outside is not attached. So I need to bring that in. You can see this one coming in now, slowly. There we go. Okay, good. So we're attached now. And again, because that's flexible and that can move, it uh, causes it not to have physics problems. As we go up, we need to go out because the crane will drag us in. So you need to kind of think of how the crane's going to move, and that's going to help you... Um, planet. So I can do a really nice long reach with uh, Triton here. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to put these out a little bit. They'll just make it easier for me to grab them. Go ahead and give you a third person view. And we'll get a little uh, screenshot, I think. It's nice to get some screenshots here. Helps me remember my adventures here. So let's go ahead and we will put these containers down.
There we go. All right, so those are yet to be delivered. I have to go get the shifter. Uh, I bought this base, I believe. I, yeah, I believe we own this base. So we own some more bases now. I We bought the uh, Komodo, so we own that as well. So that is nice to uh, own some of these bases. So we'll have to kind of live with that loud helicopter coming in. That's a different one than we just saw. So we'll go ahead and I will check these containers, see what we have for... Uh, destinations. Thought process is next destination is going to be FJ. And then, uh, so if we have some FJs, uh, I'll probably reload and then we'll send a Triton off. Triton might as well be loaded up with some containers, you know. Makes sense to uh, keep Triton loaded up. And then as we go places, we can dump off containers. So that's a south. We're not going to go to south. South is a pain because I have to bring something with me to load or to uh to shift the containers to move them around the port so i don't want to uh, bother with that so that's south so we don't want to go to south uh i have a container mover i want to make a new one so that's jsi we're not going to bother with jsi urine we're not going to go there bbg bbg so we might be out of luck here might not have any PPG. Come on. Yep, so we're not going back. We're going to go to FDNX, so we will go ahead and we will just uh, leave them there. That's fine. We don't necessarily need to, but it, it is a good little bolster of our economy if we can uh, if we can bring some with us. So go ahead and we'll grab the shifter. I just need to get these put away. There is the container shifter. And so this is my this is my preferred vehicle to move these around the uh, the yards. I can move doubles. It's just efficient at doing so. I wish that helicopter would go away. A little bit of a slowdown. We have an AI vehicle there that, and I can't get the camera where I want it, which is annoying. The um, game's a little bit in slowdown between that helicopter and Triton and Katie did and everything here. Uh, we're a little bit of a slowdown, so not too bad, but uh, it is a little bit of a slowdown. So. Gonna go ahead and we'll grab this container and I think we have to bring it up around here. I think it goes over by those concrete or it's right here is where the uh, where the delivery area is. Uh, it will give us the signal. There's another AI helicopter. I do like having these AI vehicles in the world. Gives the world a little bit of life, but can slow the game down a little bit, but I'd rather have a little bit of life in the game than, uh, than worry about being perfectly um, high FPS and not having any slowdown. A little bit of slowdown doesn't bother me. Let's not run off this ramp. Let's keep it. Alright, let's extend the carriage. So it's very heavily counterweighted to the rear because, you know, of course we have to carry these containers. So Would have been nice to get some FJs, but, you know, uh, don't have that many containers here. It looks like they reduced the container number again. You know, people are asking for increased improvement, uh, increased performance in the game, and these are the things they have to do to do it. I wish it'd be nice if they put on a slider, but then they'd have to make two different game versions, you know, so. There we go. All right. Let's hit the brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. There we go. Okay. Go up a little bit. So we're having a little bit of a physics slowdown because of the um, of everything like this is sagging. Stuff like that will happen when you have a physics slowdown. When you have some a uh, little bit of that lag is the uh, slowdown factor. It will start to slow down your physics a little bit. So not a big deal. I just have to manually push these containers up as I go up this hill. So 
This vehicle is probably, I think it's my heaviest land vehicle, this one here, and the reason is uh, between this and the ship loader because, you know, I need that mass to counterweight these containers. Now, the containers did get lighter, so I don't need it to be that much, but to be able to, like, go up the hills and stuff like this, so we just got the delivery. So we got 7,000. Is one of them expired? I don't know. So let's uh, check it, see which one got delivered here. So we will drop the bottom one. I want to make sure... Let me see if this got delivered. Okay, package expired and then delivered. Okay, so this one on the bottom expired. Not the end of the world. We lost one of them due to expiration, but that is not a big deal. I'm not uh, really all that offended by that. So. Would it have been nice to get the money? Yeah, is it at the end of the world? Am I going to complain about it? Nah. It is not the end of the world. It certainly isn't, so... Alright, so we'll go ahead and we will get rid of this uh, container shifter. And then we will get underway. So, uh, it's good to get uh, a couple contain containers delivered, even though we only got paid for one. So that's 7000 We It is very unlikely we use $7,000 of fuel and Triton, so it's still worth it. We, you know, we intended to move around the world anyway, and the container was not... You know, we weren't banking on the containers to keep us in profitability. They were just added profitability. Again, part of it doing this, it will do the wheelie because all the weight's in the rear. But um, part of it also is that slowdown is, is helping it to do a little silliness like that. So go in here and we'll uh, get rid of this. Yeah, but, but, but brakes, 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 brakes. All right, all right we'll recall that. All right, good. So we got a little bit of cash in our pocket there for that. So that's good. So unfortunately, you know, like I said, we're not going to be able to grab more. Let me look really quickly. Again, like I said, the, the issue with Sawyer South is this. One thing I'd like the devs to add, this would be a really cool feature, is we have those static vehicle workbenches where we can build, say, a base or a house or a crane. And so it'd be nice if they put static vehicle workbenches at each of these docks, and then we could load and unload cranes in there. That would be kind of cool. It would also make it so that I could, you know, I'd like to be able to load in a vehicle just outside. If we look down here, there is a spawn area at some of these gas stations and at this place right here that you can spawn a vehicle outside. That would be really nice to be able to spawn some land vehicles outside at each of these ports, and then we could be spawning our our container movers and so that would be uh, really helpful from a logistics standpoint so I'll probably make a feature request at some point about that but I'd like to go to Sawyer South with some containers it would be kind of cool going down the river uh, the issue is I don't have any way to trigger these uh, they've yet to make these radio controlled these drawbridges so I'd have to manually get out and go do them uh, you know you could RP that as there's a guy in, in the booth doing it but it would be nice if it was radio controlled uh, we could also go around and, and come up in, but again, it's it's a pain to have to uh, to have to try to move that stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll plan on going toward the south here, anyway, and then uh, that will get us going there towards uh, FJ. So let's go do that, and we'll try to take a naparoni and see if we can't get a mission. So. But again, all these are pretty much either they're expired or they're going somewhere. That um, we're not going to be able to we're not going to be able to get them uh, there on time, and so FJ we would have taken FJ, but uh, we didn't get any FJ, so that's not a big deal. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on, and we'll see if we can't get a mission, and uh, we'll put uh, Triton on autopilot, and maybe we'll go and we will try to uh, do some rescues with Katie. Would be nice to get Triton back to base. So let's go ahead and stow this uh, crane and the container mover attachment. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll bring that in, and so we'll, we'll uh, retract the container mover. Up, up! I'm hitting the rotors. I thought I was gonna uh, hope not to hit the rotors. There we go. Right, there we go. So we'll just leave this uh, container attachment 
attached. So you can hear that dog panting constantly. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, it's good to have a friend on board with us. So. so we'll stow this up, and then we'll head off. What was that? There's a fox in the water. <laughs> he's swimming. He's making it. I really don't want to watch a fox drown. Okay, so he's moving. I don't know what he's doing out there, but he's, he's in the drink. Yeah, he's just having a swim, I guess. Whatever. It's good to be a fox. Do whatever you like. As you can hear, the harbor generator is just barely on, just, you know, producing electricity for us. There we go. Okay, good. So we're all attached here. Let's get off the back. Bingo. All right, so let's go ahead and we will... Oh, I need to pull some lines. Hello there, buddy. Let's go ahead. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. I'm locking here. I need to get rid of some of these micro controls sit on the deck. There's a couple things, you know, Triton is very much a work in progress. So I still have a rope here. Let's get this one, stick it on the bit on the star in here. There we go, and we'll grab this one. I don't think that I ever I think I did rope I don't know if I roped the bow or not. Let's check and see. No, we'll check that out, see if I put a uh, a line on the bow. I did. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're good to shove off and get underway again. Oh, excuse me. So we'll start up the uh, port and starboard engines. Start to thrust off of the dock. And we'll go ahead and we will put on our nav lights. There we go. And I'm going to start just gently coming up on starboard. And I'm going to move my rudder to starboard. So what that's going to do is it's going to push us forward, but it's also going to keep the stern from coming in. So it's going to push us forward, and it's going to bring the bow to port, but it's going to keep the stern. So it's going to allow us to come out diagonally. Now I'm going to start moving that rudder that we've cleared the stern. And I'm going to go, as you can see, about um, halfway, about 22 and a half degrees to port. And I'll start to increase starboard. And we'll start to bring rudder amidships so we don't hit the stern, as you can see. We can go ahead and shut off the bow and stern thrusters. Start to give it a little bit of rudder, probably back to like 22 and a half degrees of rudder to port. And now we'll start coming up on the port screw. Start to go rudder amidships. There we go, coming up to max speed. I like to have it nice and slow like this. You know, the ship would have momentum IRL. We don't really get that momentum in game. And so I like to kind of, you know, I have it simulated with some of the systems. All right, so we're up and running here. So let's go ahead and we'll put in some uh, GPS coordinates. So let's go ahead and we'll add one there. Zoom out here. I want to add one probably way over here, I'd say. Add one there. And I have to be very careful of the island. There are a lot of little islands around here, and so I want to make sure that I don't accidentally hit any of them. Because we will hit them if uh, we're aimed at them. So, And I think probably there. And let's zoom out. I need to try to see. Okay, good. We're close to FJ there, so we'll come kind of like this. And then we'll just get right in front of FJ, and I will go ahead and put the last one. All right, and then we will go ahead and walk through our course. Good to do that, just to make sure we're not going to hit anything. Yep, that looks clear and clean. Let's see, 
that one looks pretty clean so far that's clean we're gonna go south make sure we don't hit anything here yep no obstructions there all the way down to the next point there we go looks clean there and then we're coming across here No obstructions there, and then we're going to come across just to the north of FJ here. So there we go. And let's go ahead and zoom out and make sure it looks good. Looks good to me. All right, so we're good. So autopilot can come on. We can reset and zoom out so we can kind of see some of our course there. Beautiful. All righty. So let's go ahead and see what we have for missions. So we pretty much just have this one uh, service and uh, tow. We're not going to do that mission. If you look at our money, we're getting low on money. You know, luckily now with the um, with the oil drilling, we don't have to worry too much about running out of fuel. Before we used to have to buy it; it was very expensive. So, I'm gonna go ahead. And we're just gonna take a nap, and we'll grab a mission. All right, so we got one right away here. So, extinguish all fires and rescue seven casualties. So that's a high number. That's good, and uh, it. it Closed it really quick on me, so let's go ahead and we'll uh, check it out in here. So where is it? It is up here, so it's right out here. So crew boat, radio for help. That's the one there. We're going to take Katie, and we'll go ahead and do that mission. If I had Remora, I would consider doing Remora, but uh, Remora is currently not on board. So let's go ahead, and we will grab Katie. We'll take Katie out. All right, quick little save. Oh, we're getting a big slowdown there for a second as the game was saving. All right, good. So we are good to go in Katie here. So let's jump in. So I'm going to put on the AP. That's just going to give me a uh, hold on my... Uh, it's going to smooth everything out. And then when I'm ready to detach, I'm going to pull up and backward. And that's going to help me from hitting any railings or anything. Once I get green, we'll be at flight RPS and we can go ahead and take out. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put the marker out here. Go ahead and enter that in while we wait for Katie to rev up. I think I uh, I think I think reduced the thrust myself. Oh, that's prop pitch. Never mind. we really don't want that up there. Uh, what's engine RPS? I can't even remember, dude. Um, let's see. Huh, I can't even remember, dude. one and two I think we're good so let's go ahead and I will go ahead and release us so I'm gonna pull back on the uh, S key and that will make sure we don't hit the propeller on the front all right so we're pretty close as it is so we're gonna go ahead and we will do a uh, heading bearing and as you can see it's gonna head us there and I'm just gonna manually control our altitude there we go we got flight RPS all right, and so we should be able to, we're not going to see it yet. It's out, should be right around there. You can see the uh, other island. The islands are very close together. I would like a little bit more spread apart in Not Stormworks 2. That would be kind of nice to see. All right, and then altitude. Let's go ahead and let's, uh, we'll put in an altitude hold. So let's go altitude of 200 feet maybe. And that's going to give us a little bit better of a view from this altitude, but it should be right short of the runway here. And then we'll probably come and we'll land the people here and we'll dump them off. The containers expired. That's not a big deal. Uh, stopped at Komodo, stopped at Sorry North, of course, del delivered the uh, containers. Re really didn't have any more containers for wh where I wanted to go. It seems like, uh, you know, recently they, they reduced the number of containers that are out of port. That makes sense. People were complaining about the game being laggy, especially in multiplayer. And so one of the ways to do that is take away some certain items in the game to achieve that. So that will cut down on the uh, required processing power. So that's kind of, you know, I don't think it's a huge deal, I think, for a probably the majority of the player base they didn't need or want all of those containers and so uh 
you know, having a smaller number probably helped uh, more people, but uh, you never know. All right, altitude hold's not working correctly. I'll have to deal with that later. Not, not the end of the world. Okay, that was it. I had a little bit of trimming, so that was it. So here's our rescue right there. I'm going to go ahead and take the autopilot all the way off. I'm going to go ahead and take off the heading bearing. We'll start heading down here. Okay, we are low on fuel. Uh, could be because I tipped the nose down so much. Uh, but we do have to keep an eye on that. Where is my fuel here? Fuel, okay, we're about half tanks. That's not bad. We'll be fine. There's plenty of place for me to stop, so I'm not concerned about that at the moment. So let's put in a new uh, altitude hold of, let's do 50 feet. Current heading is fine. We want to turn into the wind, ideally. The wind looks calm to me. So let me go ahead and turn on vehicle damage again. And uh, let's see. What's our current heading? 311. Let's put that in there. 311. Okay, good. So now we'll go ahead and we'll set this up. Autopilot hold, heading hold, and altitude hold. All right, good. Let's go ahead and we will do this rescue mission here. All right, and so I want to be right over this this boat. So we're going to go zoom in as far as we can, and I'm going to put the waypoint directly on there. And we will go ahead and we'll put in uh, station keeping on that. And I will go ahead and put in the, I need to put in the new waypoint. I had the old one in there. All right, so we need to come to, actually, we're, we're going right over it, so we're good. Okay, so we'll let Katie to do the thing, do her thing. It's going to be, it does this wobble. The wobble is essentially, it's, um, the P-value is a little bit high, so it can handle more wind. It needs to be tuned in just a little bit better. So that's good. Let's go ahead and we'll grab a quick pick. All right. A uh, quick little screenshot of Katie doing her work. Let's go grab this. We want to get a Fire X. I'm going to go ahead. So kind of methodology-wise, I was doing this last time, is it's best to let that ring go down through the hole before, before I get in it. That allows me to um, not have issues where I can't get through the, uh, the hatch. So. so we'll take another quick screen. I like getting these screen grabs. Bingo. Look at that. Precision. Precision work here. Uh, we're going to probably end up in the drink. Let me see where we're at here, third person. All right, we're not perfect, but I also don't want to get in the... Um, I also don't want to end up in the fire, so let's go all the way down to the water line here. All right, and we'll jump out there. Yep, see, I'm getting hit, so I need to be careful here. I'm going to leave these people in the water. That's going to save them from getting hurt, likely. If you can't climb up over here... This is a really bad fire at this point, so I need to be careful here. Whoa. So I need to try not to burn to death here. we got a couple people. So we have a lot of, uh, we have incapacitated people, so I need to come back down. And I need to res these people. So this is quite bad. Okay. Some of these ships are problematic the way they're set up to fight the fires here. So, like, I have to go down here and, like, step in the fire. So it's kind of tough sometimes to fight these fires. It'd be better if I had a fire suit. I could survive more of the um, getting hit by the fire here. Okay. There we go. Okay, good. So fire is extinguished. That's helpful. All right, so these people are going to need to get rezzed, so we'll wait on that. So we have seven, so already a lot of people hurt. So we're going to do the little jump thing here where we can heal them as I'm jumping. All right, let's go ahead and grab this person. We'll head up with them.
So we have to watch our fuel. Uh, if need be, we do own this base right next to us. What I'll do is I'll land and I'll take some of the diesel out of there. Should be all right, I hope. Uh, we're at 40 something gallons. We've used about half the tank. I should have filled up from Trite, but I'm, I'm not sure that that system is completely working yet. So. So let's go ahead and we'll grab a person number numero uno. There we go. Uh, let's see. We'll grab this defib and I want to stick. Um, let's go ahead and we will. Up. Oh, excuse me. Uh, feed her one more, and I want to take a couple of these med kits with me. All right, good. So let's uh, get this going again. All right, there we go. So this is why I do this method here: is I try to I try to get it down in that hole, down in a hole, um, feeling so bold. Um, before that way, I, I consistently fall through. Before it was obnoxious; I have to go up and down, up and down, up and down, and try to get it to do for me. So this is a little bit easier this way. I could shift Katie it over where I go in the deck, but I don't mind jumping in the water here, so that will work out. Not good, and we'll go ahead and grab. Boat is sinking a little bit. I'm a little bit concerned about that. I don't know if it was like this before, so I have to keep in mind what's going on here. That person's good. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna res these people and dump them in the water. If something did happen where this boat sank, I want these people in the water. We trying to RP this kind of realistically, you know. I want these people to live. You know, I, I do understand that this some of these mechanics are pretty basic and the NPCs are basic, but, you know, I think a lot of it is to have fun in this game, bring some of your own creativity, bring, you know, make your own enjoyment, you know. Some of the people will complain about, you know, the NPCs being too, mu too much of a mannequin, you know, what, that's two, five, we have two more, you know, but a lot of it is bring your own uh, entertainment, you know. You know, would it be cool if the, if maybe they had a little bit more life? But, you know, I hear people saying that. I'm not sure what they want, you know. How 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 would you make these mannequins better? Would rather them, like, run around crazy and, like, you have to chase after them? And, you know, I don't know. So, personally, I kind of like that, you know, they stay still and let me just do my job. And they don't panic. You know, they kind of just hang. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven. We're good. That's our full complement there. All right, good. So, it's going to take a little while to get this up. You know, I have patience. I don't mind uh, giving a little bit of weight here, going up and down. All right, so we'll go ahead and we will grab all these people. And I just want to get them closer so that they're all next to where Katie did's going to be. That way, um, I don't have to keep coming and getting them. Some of them just don't want to pay attention, so. Go in there, sir. They'll try to swim around, and then as soon as I get a certain distance, they'll uh, just... Themselves. I checked Katie did's fuel when I went in there. We're down to 35 gallons. We're at 45 when we left or when we get that fuel uh, warning. So I will check it uh, each time I go up. If we're a little bit scared that we're going to have some problems there, I will go ahead and we will uh, quickly refuel. So. so the later missions, uh, I'll get up to like 14 is, the, uh, is what I've had before. So we're down to 33. Okay, we've only used two gallons per trip essentially. So we're using used about two gallons of fuel per trip, so that's not really too too bad. I think we'll be all right. Again, I'm going to keep checking it. We, we can go land at that base right there, and there should be a little bit of fuel diesel in there that I can grab. And so it's uh, really not too too bad of a of a deal if I have to go get some more fuel. All but I think this type of harness system is a little bit more interactive, like. You know, I've done it before where, like, uh, the hummingbird, you actually have to land and put the ramp in the water. My new VTOL, you use this harness system. Uh, it, it For me, if you make things too easy mode, it becomes very boring. That's what bores me is easy mode, you know. And so, for example, like, I'm constantly busy here. I'm constantly checking my fuel. I have to make sure that we have enough fuel for this. That's uh, stressful. That's engaging. You know, just having a vehicle that has, you know, excess fuel that I never have to worry about, 
that's what bores me personally. You know, so this is the reason why I tend to, um, I'll show you. This is the method that I came up. So I used to have that issue all the time where I got hung up on the door. And so what I do is I set it up like this. This was the method I came up with is set it there and then get on the harness. So if you have any issues with that, that will fix it. Uh, do that and let the harness get under there and then you'll climb in afterwards. You know, because of course IRL, you'd be able to guide your feet into the hatch. I uh, can't do that in game. So it's uh, just kind of ragdolls you in. So it's... Um, Sometimes you have to do that to get it to work right. So you just have to work within the mechanics of the game. So we're going to go ahead and check fuel again as we go uh, get this person in. We should be good. Like I said, we're losing about five gallons per person. We have three more people. That's 15 gallons. We'll be down to about 20 gallons. And then we can either stop at this base and get some fuel. There's also fuel at Sorry North. There's also fuel at Beginner Base, which I don't know. Uh, yeah, we have we bought we started a beginner base, so should have some fuel in all these places, and uh, shouldn't be too bad. So let's go ahead and check again. We're down to 29 gallons. So yep. So my my estimation's pretty pretty spot on for how many gallons we're using per rescue. So you see, this is what happens is it gets hung up, and then if I can just kick it in the in the hole there, I can go ahead and try to get this realigned. So. A little bit uh, fussy sometimes, but it's not bad. Like, once you have a good method, you know, that's part of the thing is come up with a method that works, and you'll be in good shape. All right, so we're down to, we have two more, so not too bad. So we're talking, we're going to go down probably another 10 gallons on here. So we'll be, we'll be running pretty low, but we should be able to go get more if need be. All right, there we go. Let's go grab these last two. I'm going to have them follow me so that they're closer. And you know, we'll just put this person on my shoulders. But I like these uh, missions where we start getting more people. The missions will get up to, I think, like 14 is what I've seen. So there could even be more than that. You start getting some larger ships. But you actually have to play career for a while. You know, you have to put put in the time and they'll get harder. And that makes sense. You know, part of it is, you know, as you uh, as you play a little bit longer and you show that you can do it, you know, you start getting more challenging missions. So you would want those challenging missions right off the bat. But now as you start to get a little bit of cash and some more sophisticated equipment, you can start to accomplish it. All right. So we are going to dump you there in the seat. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay. Let me check fuel one more time. Okay. We're down 26 gallons. So we're actually doing better than what I was uh, saying was kind of like my worst case scenario. So we're, we're doing all right. We're not too bad. We're in pretty good shape. Oh, I just picked one of these people up. I'm trying to press this button. There we go. Okay, good. And so one person's going to end up standing here. Not the end of the world. Okay, good. You know, things like, again, one of the reasons I leave no clip on is, for example, let's say I fell down that hole. IRL, you'd be able to use one of your hands. You'd reach out. You'd hold a handle. So you would, you know... Okay, if you just heard, we, we're getting the low-fuel alarm now. So, uh, again, I am checking it, so we're good for this last person. We will land here, and we will grab some fuel. But not, we'll not only grab the fuel, we'll stick it in our tank so that we have it. All right, and this last person, I'm going to go ahead, and they can just stand back there. Uh, it's not a big deal for them to stand. Sometimes they clip through if you're going super-duper fast, but uh, we really don't go that fast to uh, need to necessitate uh, having them in a seat. But so this is a master this is a master warning. So you have two levels of um, of uh, essentially warning messages in uh, in these types of aircraft. You'll have master warning. A warning is like hey buddy you got to pay attention and master or you have master caution that's like hey buddy pay attention. And you have master warnings like dude you got to do something now. And so we're getting a master warning now, as you can see, and that is telling us we're very low on fuel. As you can see, we're, we, uh, we went from a yellow message, which was master caution, and we're now we're at a red um, master warning. And that's going to tell us, hey, man, you really got to do something about this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to listen to it. You know, one of the reasons why, for example, aviation is so safe and why crashes are very rare is because people take this stuff really seriously and do things like you get a master uh, warning, you get a master caution on fuel, 
Uh, you have to really land soon, as, and if you don't, you declare an emergency and you take priority and you land. If you get a master warning, it is a, in the regs for a lot of you know operators that you have to declare an emergency and uh, seek priority to land. You know, you, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to, and so that is um, you know a requirement. And so in this case, we're gonna follow these rules. And I wish I'd park closer, but I was afraid of the rotor blades. Uh, we're going to follow these rules, and we're going to actually, you know, we're going to go and do it. We're going to actually go and, by following regulations here, by following the rules, why? Okay, this, I'm trying to push on this. I just took the brakes off, so. I don't know how far I'm going to be able to get this. Uh, I'm trying not to walk in the propeller, but I'm just trying to push Katie did, and the, uh, I can push on the wheels, but I can't push on the actual struts themselves. So I'm just going to push Katie closer. Push right here, but I can't push on the uh, actual strut. There we go. I just don't want to hit the rotors hard as they're spinning. So, All right, we'll go ahead and we'll grab. Did I buy this base? Am I going to have to buy this place? No, I own it. Okay, I do own it. I think I have to use the electric um, door opener. I'm having issues with that IRL. Where I need to work, get my... Uh, Garage door fixed. All right, so let's go grab some of this diesel here. As you can see, we have uh, 7,000 liters of diesel here, so we'll go ahead and we'll pump out. I did fill this base. That's why we had the pump in, as I had filled this base pre previously. All right, let's go ahead and check. We'll watch. It's going to drag us in, not the end of the world. I'll push us out. That's why I want to make sure I shut us off. But as you can see, we're uh, almost fueled up, and I'll just push us back here. All right, there we go. Let's get out. Before we have problems here, I can spawn because I own this base. I could spawn the uh, the tug if I needed to to push us out, but we should be fine. So let's go ahead and we will push Katie back out to a safe place to take off. All right, so a little bit of a fuel run, so that's kind of nice. That adds some good emergent gameplay having to do things like that, so I like that. So let's go. And we'll set up for dropping these people off. We don't want to hang on to them too long. I should be able to see visually, but it's good to back it up anyway. All right, so we'll get, oh, I didn't check to make sure we have the green for flight RPS, but um, there's a little bit of leeway with it. I can also kind of, at this point, I can tell by the sound of the engine. I've got some time on Katie did, so... So we're, we're green. So there's the island right there. So that's good. So we're now fueled up, as you can see, 99 gallons. So, you know, I, I like that. That little bit of emergent gameplay where it was, you know, I had to really start getting concerned with my fuel. That's that's a lot more interesting to me than, you know, if you, you know, people will build their vehicles with unrealistically high fuel capacities. And it, I find it boring. It's like a big part of it is... You know, a big part of, for example, when you're an airline pilot is fuel management. You know, the captain is responsible for how much fuel you're going to take on board. And if there's any sort of weather or something else, the captain will ask for more fuel. They don't ask for more fuel. They say that they tell them they want more fuel and they get it. Um, pretty much the captain, whatever the captain wants, the captain's going to get. And, you know, that's pretty standard. You know, you, don't, you start getting asked in the office if you're doing unrealistic things like asking for full fuel every flight, which you won't because... It, it costs you fuel. You have to burn fuel to carry fuel. But when it's things like weather and, and uh, you know, stuff like that, especially usually it's weather because if you can't get into your primary airport, you have to go to your alternate, plus you have to be able to fly for an hour after that generally. And so you need to make sure you have enough fuel. So that starts to add a little bit of a, a stress element. And that, um, you know, I find that to be fun is having that little bit of stress where, okay, you know, like each time I was taking up a, a person, I was, it was taking me about five, five gallons of fuel. There's another AI boat, uh, five gallons of fuel per person. Well, then I started getting that down to four as I was moving a little bit quicker to try to get it done faster. And so that, you know, that's about, um, what's, what would that be? You know, we could buy diesel for what, $3. So we're talking $9. So we're talking um, $180 per person about is what it was uh, t costing us to rescue each person. So as you can see, it's still profitable. We're going to get like two grand of eighteen hundred per person, probably. Some of them are going to be injured, but because of that, we're going to be able to, you know, we're turning a profit. 
you know, but it adds that little bit of stress, that little bit of uh, excitement, which is fun, you know. So I think sometimes, you know, building some liabilities in your craft, building, making them so they're not completely impervious to anything is, is kind of nice because it, it makes you have to make some tough decisions. Like, for example, we could have probably made it over here with fuel, but we'd be on fumes going back to Katie did, and that would be, or going back to Triton. And one, that wouldn't be smart practices. I really don't want to crash. And two, you know, it's not very safe. So, you know, having some procedures where we say, okay, if I get a master caution, we're going to go, we're going to really consider going for fuel. Once I get a master warning, we have to go for fuel. And that's what I did was, you know, I went and we refueled. You know, once that red light comes on, fuel, no questions, no ifs, ands, or buts. So let's wait for the rotors to stop. So one of my new systems I'm using for rotor brake is I do... Uh, a geared up uh, generator and it will just go generator max when uh, when the rotors are off and that will uh, it'll give me a little boost of electricity but mainly it's just to stop the rotors so. so that was our person standing we never got fast enough to really have to worry about them having problems I will go ahead and I will do the final heal on these people try to get as much cash money dollar bills maybe we'll look for a couple Ooh, you were hurting there buddy Nope, you were good. Okay, you. You, madame. She was one of the ones that I had to uh, res, I believe. So she was uh, not doing well there for a while. So if you don't know that, you can take those medical beds, and those will auto-heal them. So we good to go here, peeps? Let's go and see if I can get all of you to follow me. See if we can do this in one. See, she already lost an eye, so she's not very... Uh, She's pretty clumsy, I think. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get one last snap of these people. It's kind of nice and fun to uh, <laughs> to chronicle the missions here. I like it. And it'll do a composite image for the thumbnail where we uh, have a bunch of different parts of the mission. There we go. Hello, hello there, sir. I missed the beehive lady. So there we go. A lot of people here. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people. You stop, you stop. Ah, good night. So, uh, very good. So, that's a good bit of cash there. So, this is peak Triton. This is what I like to do. We we only got, you know, we came from here, went over here, stopped, checked for containers, no extra containers, headed over. Uh, and one of them expired. We got one of them. So, we got seven grand. So, not a huge amount of money, but this was seven people at about two grand a piece. So, that's 14,000 plus another three for putting out the fire. So, you can see that was uh, doing these little side missions. It starts to make Triton worthwhile. Let's see where Triton is. In the world, if I can see Triton, maybe we'll fly out there. So Triton should be well on our way. So let's go ahead and let's uh, hunt for Triton. KD has the old radio system in there. So let me look up real quick. I'm going to see if I can find the... Uh, Triton will broadcast the radio frequency for the position of trite of the uh, pad for triton so i can actually uh, go right in on triton but i don't know if i wrote it down i don't think i did so i'm not sure what the uh freak is for triton but let's go ahead and we'll take off and we'll head out to triton and we'll uh, land on the pad so i need to heal myself a little bit all right i'll wait for flight rps there we go. Okay, I'm going to go... I'll just manually fly this. I enjoy flying, you know. I understand flying can be challenging for a lot of people. For me, you know, kind of have a lot of expertise in flying, so it's... Uh, I like to do a lot of it, more of it my by hand. You know, if you're getting bored, I recommend try start flying by hand. You know, do more things manually. You know, a lot of people are just very concerned about... They want everything automated, everything automated, everything automated... You know, that takes away jobs for you. And part of the engagement, part of the reward of becoming a good pilot is actually flying, being able to fly by hand really well. You know, and so when you just, when you're a passenger all the time, you know, you don't feel like the lead character in your story. So it's nice to, you know, hand fly for a little bit. Like, for example, take off the, all that autopilot, all that auto hover does is it smooths out your motion. And so take that off, you know, fly, fly yourself a little bit. Like my hands are off the controls now. It flies well by itself, you know, uh, you know, with very little input and, you know, get your hands on fly by hand. You know, I've talked before about how like some of the, the airline flying was some of the most boring flying I ever did because it was just, you know, you're a passenger, 
you might as well be a pastor for most of it. You do takeoffs and landings, you do taxis, but um, for most of it, you're just a pastor, and that's not very engaging. You know, if you actually, f you know, do some hands-on flying, that's engaging, that's fun. You know, so I highly recommend that. You know, get a little time behind the stick. That's the stick time's what's fun when you go flying. So, little, you know, over reliance on automation, it just it really will turn it into a bore fest. All right, so we're looking for Triton. So Triton's track was straight along the coast here, and then down south. So Triton's going at about 20 knots. You know, the ship seems slow until you leave them and go do something else, and then the ship's. You know, you'd be surprised how far away they are. So we're going to be looking for Triton here. And so I need to hook, uh, you know, at some point I'll work on Triton some more and I'll look at the radio system. The radio system should be broadcasting the position to me. It's hooked up, but I just forget the frequency. And I didn't write it down. I just looked to see if I wrote it down. I have to write it down. But I should be able to pick it up. Uh, Katie actually has a radio and can read Triton's position as Triton's moving. So I'm just going to cheat and go third person. I just want to make sure that they change some of the way the game operates with... Uh, they change the way the game operates some with things uh, spawning in and out. And so I just want to double check by... I'm going to zoom out and make sure that I haven't lost Triton. might actually cheat a little bit more and... I just want to make sure that it's not a game issue and that things are running fine. So I'm going to turn on AP. I'm going to go in, and we'll set uh, map vehicles. Okay, good. So that's fine. I see where Triton is. It's where, you know, I know the path I laid, so it is fine. I just didn't know where to expect how far away Triton is. Triton is quite far away. Triton made a lot of progress. So that mission took us some time, but it didn't take us an insane amount of time. And Triton is pretty far to the south. Triton's about halfway to FJ. And so Triton goes about 18 knots. And so, you know, yes, you could say the ships are slow. But one of the things, if you don't want to sit in a ship all day, you know, and just kind of, you know, again, automated, sit back with your feet up, that I can understand that getting boring. You know, the way that I stay engaged with this game is, say, for example, you know, I need to do some chores around the house. That's a great time to launch Triton, put it on autopilot and get where I need to go because I can go run around the house and do some chores. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to play a game. So I can play a game and do chores. So that's awesome. And if you want some engage time like I want right now, you know, here I am. Uh, I slept on Triton, did some, uh, got a mission, and then took Katie out and did a mission and had a lot of fun doing that mission. And Triton has been moving the whole time. There it is. Uh, nope, that's not Triton. That's nah, not Triton. Triton's up here somewhere. Again, I cheated and looked, but, um, you know, I should know the frequency of it, and the frequency would, would give me a uh, bearing directly to Triton, so I just checked really quick so I wasn't wasting a ton of time. But um, Triton should be up here. Triton already passed. This, there is Triton's uh, right off there about uh, 11 o'clock low. <laughs> it will always be low when it's a <laughs> sea vehicle and I'm an air vehicle. But there's Triton, as you can see right there. So we're going to go ahead and we will land on Triton. So Triton, as you can see, makes pretty good, pretty fast progress. I do have the weather overridden now, and one of the reasons I did that, it was it was just super foggy all the time and rainy, and I was kind of getting sick of it. It's pretty rainy, foggy IRL right now for me, and so I just was like, okay, let's uh, let's get a break with this rainy, foggy nonsense. So I just pressed the space bar. That will zero out my propeller pitch. And so we're going to fly it in like a helicopter. I know Triton goes 18 knots, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, add in about 18 knots of propeller. I also want to find the heading that Triton is going. So these are all things. An autopilot is not meant to fly for you. It is meant as workload reduction. You are still the pilot. You are still in charge. You know, uh, so 176. So we're going to put in 176. 176. Okay, enter, and we're going to go heading hold. So that's going to hold the heading to Triton. Now I'm going to start adding in prop. And I want to go, I'm going to go about 20 knots. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll, we'll, we'll go exactly to 18 knots. There is a little bit fast. So I'm just going to back it up. And I want to go exactly 18 knots. And I'm going to use my, uh, I'm going to pitch the aircraft forward and backward like a helicopter. And what I'm doing is I am essentially zeroing out the relative velocity of Triton. So I'm just gently, very gently putting in a little bit of propeller pitch. Just gently tap at a time. And I want to get exactly to 18. So 
So I'm just tapping some off now. As you can see, we're going to slowly come down. And I'm trying not to upset the flight. I'm trying to keep level. And so that will get us right there. So there we go, 18. So we're matched with Triton's velocity. Now, this is a trick I like to use. This is how you do it in real life. So, for example, I can't see below me. I don't have a bubble canopy on this. But if I put Triton off like this, I can see with my peripheral vision, and I can line up for the pad. And so now we'll come in like this. And I'm going to strafe sideways. We can check my speed. My speed's a little bit heavy. I just uh, I reduced this down to 17 knots. And so as I pitch forward, we'll go faster. As I pitch back, we will go slower. And we're going to come in sideways into Triton. And so I need to change my heading. I think Triton just changed heading. Yep, Triton changed heading on me. So we're looking at a two, 210. So 210 heading. So that's why we're a little crooked as Triton changed heading on me. So just hit a waypoint. So now, as you can see, we're coming in diagonally. I can see the whole time. And now I do have a, a camera underneath. So those who are participating in Challenge Golf, you can, uh, you know, I have a camera as part of the system. So I can use my camera to align to the pad. And so the smoke, I still need to deal with a little bit. Smoke does make it easier to find Triton. So because the propeller is zeroing, me, zeroing out the relative velocity, I'm down to about 17 knots on that. I can just gently pitch forward and back. I don't really have to worry about constantly maintaining forward propeller pitch to maintain the speed. And so I'm coming in diagonally. Again, I'm using my peripheral vision. I can see the top of Triton. We're too far forward. I'm just going to gently pick the nose up and let Triton uh, continue to go away from me. And there we go. I'm just lining up. So I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle. I need to put a bullseye in there at some point. But as you can see, that little circle, I want to get to the middle of the H. And so you want to be very uh, precise with this. You know, I will hit the propeller of this aircraft if I'm not careful. So the connection system automatically reconnects on this. So we'll go ahead, and I'm just going to gently, I want to get, again, that cursor right on that H. I don't, I don't really have to worry too much if I get too far back, but I do have to worry if I get too far forward, I will hit the propeller. So I have to be very careful here. And so, you know, I could have tried coming over here without getting fuel, but this would add an undue amount of stress. Right now, this is not all that stressful. You know, I have a video, it was a short, where I was low on fuel and... In heavy seas, trying to get Katie to back on Triton from the uh, first career build series. And that amount of stress is just not helpful. You see how the shadow, it makes it hard to see the H? Well, that's when the bullseye will light, light up. As you can see, that red bullseye lights up when we get right over the pad. And the uh, spotlights come on. So it makes it much easier to see the pad. So I'm just taking my time. Remember, we went and we got fuel. We have plenty of fuel to, to accomplish this mission. So I'm just level. And we're going 16 knots. Triton is going two knots faster than us, so I'm going to let Triton pull up. I'm not going to try to slide us back. I'm just going to let Triton do it for me. So there we go. Just the level again. We'll come down a little bit. Getting obscured by the smoke just a little bit there. There we go. Okay, good. We're below the smoke now. So much of flying in aviation is the reason why it's so safe is we don't rush. We take our time. You know, very precise, always trying to correct and be better. You don't need to rush. Rushing is going to be, rushing is going to take you longer than taking your time. Taking your time, you're going to get it right on the first try, the second try. If you rush, it's going to take you five or six times, and it's actually going to take you longer than if you just took your time. And so I have that cursor right in the middle. I want to get it precisely where I want it. And I can see the distance sensor now on the camera, and I'm going to get that circle right on there. And so, as you can see, very gentle motion here. And so, just let Triton just gently go forward of me here. And I'm just going to come to the right a little bit. There we go. Start to lower us down. Beautiful. And I'm just progressively getting better and better here. Closer and closer. I'm not rushing. Rushing is how you, you know, you have accidents. Don't want to rush. You know, they call, you know, when, when there's an... Uh, an accident or a um, a crash, 
you know, they will uh, often call something, they'll talk about the error chain. And so it's not one thing that caused it. For example, you didn't get enough sleep that night, so you were a little bit, you weren't on your game, and then you were rushing, you know, the weather wasn't great. You know, it's not one thing that usually causes the accident. It's a chain of errors. And if you'd, if you'd broken any of those links in the chain, you would have fixed it. So, for example, rushing, like I have the urge to just slam it down on the pad now. I'm fighting that urge. Take the time, do it right, and you're going to have better success than if you just try to slam it down. Because if I break something, if I upset Triton, if I hit the propeller, now I don't have the propeller helping me to maintain a current a constant velocity. It's just better to take your time and uh, go slowly. Have patience. That's I have infinite patience, and that's, um, you know... That comes from years of doing this type of stuff where you have to do real precision work. Oh, there we go. We hit the propeller anyway. Katie did is very tight on space here, so let's go ahead. I need to get in there now. Katie is very tight on space. So uh, Katie is a little bit overly tight. It's like one block from hitting the propeller. So if I'm one block off, I hit the propeller, which is a little bit too uh, precise there. So I need to... Might need to even slide the connectors back for Katie did. So we're going to do this very visual here. I'm going to come in lower. And I'm going to go very much visual here. There we go. And I will hit the propeller if I'm not careful. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm just going to gently slide forward here. I don't have the help of the uh, propeller anymore pushing me forward. Oh, there's a loot crate. So I don't have the help of the propeller to push me forward, so I need to... I have the nose wheel of Katie on the pad. I do have a light there, too, which I should probably get rid of. That's not helpful to me, get me to uh, do this here, to attach. So we're pretty close here. I just need to get it in. There we go. All right, good. I'm going to rotate to lock both. There we go. Okay. Let's shut down Katie, and we need a repair. Uh, I shut down. I need to keep the master power on in order to get this door open. There we go. All right, good. So we passed that loot crate there. Let's go ahead and first thing I want to do is we're going to... We could use the money at this point. So we'll grab this torch. You see how tight the space is on the propeller for Katie. There's really no room for error. As you can see, it's no room for error. What I should probably do if I can, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can, is slide that forward one, but I really can't. I'm very tight on space with Katie did. So let's go ahead. This boat, um, I'm not going to worry about that uh, loot crate. It's not worth my time to go back there. If I had Remora, I'd do it, but uh, I don't want to risk it. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.